Okay. Uh, good morning to you again. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, our lectures uh, topic today. Uh, we're going to start talking about antenna systems uh, because uh, we basically uh, want to understand how radar imaging works as well. Uh, so far, the imaging topics we discussed uh, in this course uh, was mostly about optical imaging. So we learned uh, kind of how to uh, model uh, optical imaging systems using some wave propagation uh, uh, models. Um, and that was like the only forward model uh, approach we discussed uh, next two weeks uh, will be the radar imaging systems. And uh, as you know, any radar imaging system involve an antenna. Uh, so we should first un understand like how an antenna works, what is uh, critical about an antenna design uh, from an imaging perspective. Okay, so that will be our first topic today. So we want to understand how a physical antenna system works. Uh, so uh, we're not going to go into details of, of course, antenna design topics. That's kind of like more an electromagnetic uh, course topic. Uh, we're gonna limit ourselves uh, to understand how uh, propagation from a physical antenna works. Uh, and we're gonna mostly consider the far field setting because as we discussed in wave propagation, uh, for many radar imaging uh, settings, uh, the Fraunhofer uh, approximation is valid. Uh, so we're gonna, uh, we can think that many uh, antenna systems uh, work in the far field. Uh, so we want to understand far field models uh, for antenna systems. Uh, we want to basically understand the mathematical relationship uh, between uh, a wave uh, that has uh, propagated from a physical antenna and at a plane that is far, okay, far away, uh, or that is in the far field. Okay, so we want to get this mathematical relation uh, between uh, these two planes, uh, uh, the mathematical relationship between the waves in these two planes. Okay? Uh, the first plane we consider is the plane just in front of the physical antenna. Okay? We call that plane generally aperture plane. Okay, so aperture plane is kind of like an abstract plane. Uh, so uh, just in front of the physical uh, antenna, we consider a plane, which we call the aperture plane. And uh, the wave field distribution that is in the aperture plane, uh, we call that uh, function S zero X Y. Okay, and that's, uh, we're gonna call this function illumination function. Okay, so illumination function is basically the spatial distribution of the wave just uh, across the uh, physical antenna, okay, or the antenna aperture. And we want to understand how S0, XY changes uh, in the far field, okay? So what will be the effect of S0, XY in the far field? Uh, we want to uh, understand that. Um, okay, and uh, we're going to define for that, we're going to define another concept, antenna radiation pattern, which we're going to denote uh, in spherical coordinates as uh, E of uh, phi psi. Uh, and antenna radiation pattern is actually what uh, we're going to observe in the far field, okay, or what we're going to observe uh, as a spatial distribution of the waveform uh, in this uh, far field. Okay, so we want to understand, as a result, the relation between these two mathematical quantities. Okay, how is antenna radiation pattern is related uh, to the illumination function, S0. Uh, you can, of course, get this relationship uh, directly by using the Fraunhofer um, approximation. Okay? Uh, so we expect that in the far field, we're going to observe Fourier transform due to the front of our approximation. Uh, so you can directly use that result to find this relationship, but we're gonna uh, here uh, do an alternative derivation of the front of our approximation, and we're gonna get that Fourier transform relationship in a different way. Uh, so we're not gonna use the front of our result we found before, but we're gonna find it using uh, an alternative uh, uh, approach. Okay, so let's do that. Um, 
Okay, so what we want to understand uh, is, of course, the, the relationship between these two, but to make the problem simpler in the beginning, uh, we're going to focus on the one dimensional case. Okay, let's say our aperture uh, is one dimensional plane, uh, it's not a plane anymore, it's one dimensional, S or XY, uh, and we want to understand its effect uh, in one dimension in the far field as well. So uh, we want to understand the relation between s to x and e to the phi. Okay, so we first uh, constrain ourselves to the 1D. Okay, so in the 1D case, uh, our propagation is uh, from this line that changes with x, okay, and suppose uh, this is the propagation direction z. Okay, so if you think about in this thing, here we're only considering variation along x, and our propagation is along uh, direction z, okay? So here you see the inverted uh, or rotated version of that planes here. And uh, we want to understand what will be the effect of each point on this x uh, line uh, in the far field. Okay, to understand that, we're going to consider a particular point. Let's consider a particular point x, okay? Because we want to understand what we're going to observe in the far field, we, uh, we can uh, model the wave propagation as parallel uh, rays. Okay? Because in the far field, if uh, we're looking very far away, then the rays that are originating or the waves that are originating from an infinitesimal point will appear as parallel, parallel rays. Okay? So we're gonna just consider a parallel ray uh, originating from this uh, point uh, that is at uh, spatial location X. Okay. And we want to understand uh, how uh, it will contribute to the angle psi. Okay. So uh, remember that we want to un understand antenna radiation pattern as a function of the spherical coordinate. So I'm going to consider an angle psi, and I want to understand what I'm going to observe at angle psi. Okay. Due to all spatial positions here. First, I'm going to start with a single position, single point x. Okay, from the single point x, what is coming uh, to me at angle phi is a zero x. Okay, that's its magnitude or its amplitude. So it can be complex as well. Uh, but as uh, this point, as the wave from this point propagates, uh, its phase will also change. Okay, so we need to also take into account that phase change. Uh, how much the phase will change. So let's uh, find that. Of course, that depends on the path, the length of the path traveled from this point to that far point, okay? Uh, so we need to basically understand uh, how uh, phase will change uh, differently for different spatial positions x. Okay, so let's understand what will be the phase change, phase uh, difference, of this point uh, compared to the origin. Okay, so if we think, uh, consider another parallel ray from the origin, okay, and consider the parallel ray with angle phi from this uh, point x, okay, we want to understand what will be the length difference between these two rays. Okay, and what will be the difference uh, when we consider a far field plane here? The difference will be this length, okay, so this uh, portion. What is the amount of this portion? Let's find that. If this is origin zero, uh, and if this uh, has spatial uh, location little x, then uh, we have here uh, x times the sine of this angle. Okay, what is the sine of this angle? If uh, this angle, if you call this angle phi, so this is the uh, propagation angle, Okay, with respect to z uh, axis, uh, then here we have uh, 90 degrees minus phi, and uh, the angle here will be phi because this should again sum to this angle here should sum to 90 degrees. Okay, here uh, the angle is phi, so this uh, the length of this um, portion of the ray, which is the amount of different length compared to this ray here is x times sine phi. Okay, so 
the pathland difference between the origin, between the uh, parallel ray uh, originating from the origin and between the parallel ray originating from the spatial position X is X sine phi. Now we should understand how much phase difference uh, this uh, path length difference will cause. Okay, so what do we know for a wave? We know that a wave propagates uh, or the phase of a, a wave changes by two pi as it propagates by the length of wavelength. Okay, so if uh, the propagation distance is wavelength, then the phase change will be two pi. So if we do that uh, ratio computation for this thing, so if uh, lambda distance causes two pi phase change, what will uh, the distance x sine phi <coughs> will cause? Okay, as a phase, as a phase change, that's going to be two pi over lambda times x sine phi. Okay, so that's the phase difference uh, that uh, this uh, ray will have compared to this one. Okay, so if we write the uh, the parallel ray reaching uh, to this position, or uh, let's say uh, with angle uh, phi, then uh, what is contributing from this position is the amplitude of the wave from that position times uh, the phase change it will uh, have. Uh, and uh, the phase change, uh, we find it as two pi over lambda x sine phi. Okay, so uh, that's going to be the phase of our um, additional phase that will add edit uh, to this uh, complex amplitude. Okay, so this is the contribution. So this two term together is the contribution to uh, the antenna radiation pattern at angle phi okay, from a single point x. Now, we want to find the uh, radiation pattern at angle phi coming from all positions x, okay, due to all positions in x. So we need to integrate this with respect to x from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so that's going to be our antenna radiation pattern uh, expression. Or uh, it's going to be basically what we will observe in the far field at angle uh, phi. Okay, so that's uh, what we're going to get. Here, uh, there is an additional um, scaling by 1 over lambda. Uh, the purpose of uh, adding this factor is uh, to make the antenna radiation pattern independent of wavelength directly. Okay, so when you add this ratio, uh, antenna radiation pattern becomes only the uh, function of the physical distance uh, or the physical uh, size of the antenna aperture uh, with respect to wavelength. Okay, so it doesn't depend each separately, but it's function of the ratio of the physical distance of the aperture uh, divided by the lambda wavelength. Because to achieve that in the magnitude as well, we include this term. Okay, so it's not important, it's just a scaling term. Uh, so this is going to be our antenna aperture. So we said that we are expecting to see in the far field the Fourier transform of whatever we had in this plane okay, or in this line. Uh, but if you look at this expression that we obtained, this is nothing but the uh, but a Fourier transform as well. Okay, so if you notice, this is a one-dimensional Fourier transform. Uh, we have uh, s your x a to the minus j x a to the minus j, 2 pi, x times fx was the 1D Fourier transform. So instead of fx, here we have sine phi divided by lambda. So that means we evaluate our Fourier transform, capital S0, at sine phi divided by lambda. Okay, and there is also this factor in front. So that's our antenna radiation pattern for the 1D case. Okay, so it's the Fourier transform as we expected. Remember that I told you, you can also get this result by directly using the Fraunhofer approximation as well. Uh, remember what we learned uh, from Fraunhofer approximation. In the far field, we're going to observe S0, the Fourier transform S0. Uh, and this Fourier transform was scaled in this plane, X prime plane, uh, with lambda d. 
symmetry. That was our Fraunhofer propagation result. Here, if you replace the relation between x prime and x into this equation, okay, so x prime is the, the, uh, the point uh, we're gonna have, or the spatial position we have in this plane due to the spatial position here, okay? If we write the relation between them uh, for a propagation distance d, uh, that's gonna be a d sine phi. Yeah, and if we replace that, uh, you're gonna get the same expression as well. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details of that, but it's the, you can get the same result through from home for approximation as well. Okay, that's what we proved before, of course. Okay, so we find the general relationship in the 1D case between the illumination function and antenna radiation pattern. Okay, let's uh, understand that through one example. Okay, let's consider a, an aperture that is uniformly illuminated. Okay, so uh, you should think that someone designed this antenna, okay, so picked all of these antennas Okay, in a way that in the plane just in front of the physical antenna, we observe a uniform way. Okay, so that means we're gonna we're getting constant value uh, in the plane just in front of the physical antenna or in the aperture plane. Okay, so uh, S ray X in this case, if we, someone designed such an antenna. That in that case, x ray x uh, is equal to a constant, let's say one, uh, within its physical aperture. Okay, let's say the aperture length is L. Okay, so from minus L over two to plus L over two, uh, it takes value one, the illumination function, and zero otherwise. Okay, so we have uniform illumination within the physical aperture of the antenna. That's how the antenna is designed. Uh, here, I should mention that S ray X, or in the 2D case, S ray X Y, is something designed by the antenna design. Okay, so this this illumination function is something you you uh, form yourself by picking your antenna structure or antenna uh, design. Uh, so, uh, if someone designed this uniformly illuminated uh, aperture. Okay, let's find the antenna pattern we're gonna see in the far field due to this uniform the illuminates the aperture. Let's understand that. Uh, we know that we can mathematically express this function uh, through this rectangle function scaled with L. Okay, so that's uh, the uniform uh, illumination in terms of rectangle function. Now, if we want to find the antenna pattern, we need to find, evaluate this function, e to the phi is one over lambda, Fourier transform of S0, evaluate it at sine phi over lambda. Uh, the Fourier transform of this term is L times sin L times f of x. Okay, so instead of f of x, we're gonna write sine phi over lambda. Uh, and if you include this scaling factor, we're gonna get this term. So the antenna pattern is L over lambda <coughs> sinc, L over uh, sinc as sine phi divided by lambda. Okay, so that's uh, the antenna pattern uh, with respect to this angle uh, phi. Uh, let's visualize this antenna pattern. So this is visualizing this function is kind of like something different than what you probably get used to because you're trying to visualize a function that is uh, as a function of an angle uh, phi. Okay, so I want to visualize this function as a function is uh, uh, the function of angle phi. Like how it will look like uh, in terms of the angle change. Uh, let's try to do that. Uh, so here we have a sync function. Okay, what do we know about sync function? We know that sync takes um, zero values at all integers. Okay, so if the inside term L lambda sine phi becomes an integer, then the sync will take value zero. Okay, so for any non-zero integer, so that if L over lambda sine phi is equal to K, with K being an integer, then we're gonna get zero value here, which means antenna pattern will take value zero. 
okay, at certain angles. Let's find those angles. For example, uh, let's first think about, uh, will there always be an angle that makes the antenna pattern zero? If you think about that, the answer will depend on the relation between L over lambda, okay? because you wanna make this term integer. Okay? But if L over lambda is less than one, right then sine is all also less than or equal to uh, one then that means you can never make this term an integer okay so if l over lambda is less than one or if l is less than lambda okay so that means the physical antenna aperture size if that is less than lambda wavelength then this antenna pattern has no zeros okay but uh, this is uh almost never the case okay in the physical uh, apertures we always uh, have uh, sizes that is much much larger than lambda okay so uh, this is not very practical interest this case if you consider the, the case that l over lambda is greater than one or in general l over lambda will be large as i said then we're going to have many zeros in this function, okay, whenever inside becomes one. Uh, how can we find the angles that has zero values uh, in the pattern? That's gonna be, uh, so we are gonna equate this thing to k, integer k, then solving for the angle phi will be sine inverse k times lambda divided by L, okay, for any non-zero integer k. So at these angles, we're gonna get zeros. Uh, then how our function will look like, okay? Can you try to visualize this uh, function? Okay, so the, this function is, a, is, an, uh, is viewed uh, in terms of angle phi will look like this, okay? So uh, these are, so for example, this angle is the first zero crossing, okay? First angle that you have zero in the antenna pattern, okay? Which is basically sine inverse lambda over L, okay? It is this angle. And then this is the second zero you have, okay? Sine inverse two lambda over L and so on. We're gonna have those as well. Uh, and uh, the function will look like this. How we can understand this, if this was not, a function of angle but a spiritual position this would be a sync function okay so remember that sync function will look like something like this okay now all the zeros corresponds to an angle so you can think that you have your sync function and you now like close your sync function uh, so you you stretch or you squeeze your sync function from the uh, from the right and left okay then that will give you this function uh, it will look like this function Okay, so that's the antenna radiation pattern uh, in terms of the angle uh, phi. Uh, okay, and you, if you like um, look at like antenna design topics or some radar imaging uh, papers, you're gonna see this type of antenna patterns. Okay, so the antenna patterns are always like plotted like uh, plotted in the space. Okay. So this was for the 1D case. Let's now also understand the 2D case. Uh, in the 2D case... Hocam bir şey sorabilir miyim? Tabii, acaba? sor. Mm -hmm. Hocam yukarıda bir phase difference kısmına gelebilir miyiz acaba? Hı -hı. Ha, şimdi biz bu phase difference'ı böyle tanımadık ya. Biz orijinden gönderilen ray'in zero phase olduğunu mu düşünüyoruz bu durumda? Orijine şey göre her, her birini yani faz farklarını gelecek şeylerin hepsinde aynı bir faz varsa e, diyelim ki bunun başka bir fazı vardı. E to the j theta. O e to the j theta fazı bunların hepsinde de olacak zaten. Yani o e to the j theta diye bunun fazı varsa şurada x de evolate ettiğinde tamam? bunun önünde e to the j theta diye bir terim varsa o zaten e, bütün e, x noktalarında gene var. Biz farklı x değiştikçe yani constant bir fazı varsa bunun yani şu s ray x'in x'e göre değişmeyen constant bir faz terimi varsa o orijindeki terimde de var diğer bütün terimlerde de var. Tamam. Ama o 
e, şuraya ekstra bir ekstra bir E2C e, teta terimi olarak geliyor olacak. Zaten o şunun içinde gene duruyor. Anlatabildim mi? Hı, anladım. Yani tamam. bizim dolayısıyla burada origin'dekine göre her bir x noktasında ne kadar farklı faz değişimi olduğunu dikkate almamız lazım. Çünkü o x değiştikçe değişen şey o her bir noktadan gelen e, e, r'lerin fazları olacak. Ona dikkate almamız gerekiyor. Yani bunun bir fazı olabilir ama o, o bunun bir constant bir fazı varsa zaten o diğerlerinde de var. O bir şey olarak mı çıkacak ya? E üzeri ctata sabit olduğu için zaten Aynen. bir scaling olarak zaten Aynen çıkacak. öyle. Yani <gülüyor> SEO x'i şey diye düşün. Bir tane mesela x'e bağlı bir fonksiyon, kompleks bir fonksiyon olsun e, içinde. Bir de önünde e to the ctata olsun. İşte sen bunun sıfırdaki değerine baktığın zaman Zaten x'deki e, terimden dolayı bir faz gelemez. Tam yukarıdaki çünkü x'ler e, olmayacak. Ama o it is jtata terimi olabilir bunda. Bir takım ta, e, fazı olabilir. Tamamdır hocam. Teşekkürler. Tamam, anlatabildim mi? Tamam. Ee, Sağ ol. Okay, so let's continue with the 2D case now. So we wanna, in reality we wanna understand the 2D case because antenna uh, patterns, the illumination function is not 1D but it's uh, generally 2 dimensional. Okay, uh, especially if we wanna do imaging. Okay, we use a 2 dimensional physical antenna here, uh, and so there is a 2 dimensional illumination function here. We wanna understand its effect in the far field. Okay, that illumination function's effect in the far field. Uh, so let's apply uh, the same idea to the 2D case. Okay, so again, this is our propagation distance uh, or propagation direction, uh, Z. Uh, it's, uh, we consider propagation from this 2D plane, X, Y. Uh, here, um, uh, we need to consider uh, the, uh, the radiation pattern as a function of two angles now. Phi is the angle uh, from the Z axis, okay? And um, if you, So suppose this is the uh, propagation distance that we want to understand. Uh, suppose we want to understand the radiation pattern at this angle or at this direction. Okay, this has angle phi with z axis. And if we project this direction on the xy plane, we're going to get x prime. And the angle this makes with x direction, we call that phi. Okay? So this direction will change with respect to phi and psi. Sorry, what we call this psi. Uh, so let's understand that. If we uh, look at uh, the phase difference or the path length difference due to uh, different points on x prime, that's actually what we discussed as 1D case. Okay, so the path length difference from a spatial position x prime will be Uh, as we discussed before, it's going to be x prime times sine of this angle, sine phi. Okay, that's going to be the path length difference uh, from a ray uh, propagating from this x prime position. Okay? Now the task is uh, expressing this x prime in terms of x and y, because you want to write it in, term, in terms of x and y. What is the relation of x prime to x and y? If you think about what this is, this is rotated uh, coordinate system, okay? So if you rotate the xy coordinate system counterclockwise by angle phi, then you're going to get the coordinates x prime, y prime, okay? So the relation between x prime, uh, y prime, and xy will be given by the rotation matrix with angle phi. Here, uh, There is no minus here. I think it's a mistake, a uh, typo. Uh, so the rotation angle by phi for clockwise rotation is cosine phi, sine phi, minus sine phi, cosine uh, phi. Sorry, these are psi. Uh, okay, so if you write now x prime in terms of x, y, it's going to be cosine psi times x, uh, sine phi times y. Okay, so x prime is basically this thing in terms of x and y. If we uh, replace x prime with this thing, we're going to get this expression. Or if we open all terms, we're going to get this term. Okay, this is the path length difference from this point 
okay, uh, or uh, for the ray that is uh, propagating from this form, this spatial position. Okay, so it's in terms of x and y. Now, again, uh, from this point, we have complex amplitude coming uh, to us, which is s to x y, and its phase will change by this amount. Okay, so we add. Uh, Sorry, this is the path length difference. So we're going to again multiply this with 2 pi over lambda. That's going to give us the phase change. So we add that phase change uh, to this function. And then we integrate over all spatial positions x, y. Okay, and that's going to what we will receive uh, at angle phi and psi okay, in the far field. Uh, at a fixed uh, angle, phi and psi. Uh, as before, we introduced this uh, additional factor in front to avoid dependence of the radiation pattern directly to the wavelength. Um, okay, so uh, as the last thing, uh, we can again observe that what we have here as an integral is nothing but a two-dimensional Fourier transform. 